In the previous part of this lesson, we've seen why a convex lens is called a converging lens. Now let's discuss the concave lens in detail. It refracts the light in a similar way. A ray of light after entering the concave lens bends towards the normal and when it again enters air, it bends away from the normal. Will the concave lens behave in the same way as the convex lens? Will the rays converge after refracting from a concave lens? If the rays from a point object are incident on a concave lens, then after refraction, they do not converge at a single point. These refracted rays diverge. It means they go away from each other. But wait, since they do not intersect at a common point, does that mean no image is formed? Well, the image is formed. If we were to extend all these rays backward, they all meet at this point. The virtual image is formed at this point. So this is a pattern by which concave lens refracts rays of light. It diverges all the light coming from a point. Hence, it's called a diverging lens. Now let's look at both the lenses side by side. So the convex lens converges all the light rays from a point object and the concave lens diverges all the light rays from a point object. But usually our objects are big and not just a single point. So let's use an arrow to denote an object. We can take points on the arrow and find out the image for each point. Finally, we join all the image points together to get the complete image. This is a real and inverted image. This is the image formed for an object when a convex lens is used. Are the object and the image of the same size? What will happen if I change the position of the object? Will the position of the image change? Will the size of the image change? In order to know the answers to these questions, keep watching our future videos.